Welcome to episode 209 of the weekly Shared Security Show. And joining me this week is the lone protagonist, co-host Scott Wright. Good day, Tom. Hello, everybody. Hello. No Kevin today. No Kevin. That's sad. It's we are sad, sad. Sad day when Kevin doesn't grace us with his uh, presence. Yes, yes. He's got a uh, company offsite uh, this week, and we'll let him talk about that when he gets when he returns <laughs> next week. But um, <laughs> but uh, it's just us today. But uh, we have some exciting stories, yeah, to talk about, Fun of things. course. And uh, before we get started, I did want to give everyone an update. Um, I think those of you that followed me on Twitter, um, I posted the other day that um, I have officially started the process to delete my Facebook and Instagram yes, accounts. Yes, I saw your Twitter post on that, yeah. Yes, yes, very exciting. Uh, <laughs> exciting times uh, that I live in now. <laughs> so Honestly, something that I never thought that I would do. Yeah, it's funny. We've I, talked about it a few times. Once in a while when there were big flare-ups, yeah. you know, we'd say, all right, I think maybe it's time and... Yep, and then we'd start doing the process, and like we we as we mentioned last week, right? You know, you start the process, and then you do one little touch to the website, and oh, I guess you're back. <laughs> it didn't get deleted, so yeah, yeah, exactly. So I so you get the 30 day window essentially um, yeah. before they delete your account. But uh, before I did that, I downloaded all of my data. Uh, so I had a Facebook account since 2008. Oh, that would be interesting. And uh, it was interesting because uh, the way that they give it to you, they give it to you in uh, separate zip files. And uh, so I got five large zip files, uh, mm. a couple gigabytes a piece, actually ended up being 23 gigabytes of data. <laughs> wow. That Facebook had on me. Um, and it's actually a little surprising. Um, I might actually post an article just showing you all the things that Facebook collects about you, but every comment you make, every post, every photo you've ever uploaded, ever commented on, tagged, um, all the location, like your location data from every update that you've sent. Wow. Um, it's a little little disturbing. I mean, yeah. We all know that Facebook collects a lot of information yeah. about you, but until you actually see it yeah. and you download it, you know um, what? It's really eye opening. That gives me an idea. If we don't have an idea for this month's monthly show, we should just take a little stroll through your sanitized <laughs> Facebook data. <laughs> <laughs> My sanitized data. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I know you've got stuff in there you don't want everybody to see. You know. <laughs> Well, I mean, you can show you all the locations that I've been since 2008. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I don't have that many gigabytes of, of data <laughs> in Facebook, but uh, you should find out. Uh, you yeah, can sure. download your data anytime. Okay. So, um, yeah, we could talk about that. Let's maybe we should do a, a at least a part of a show on on, yeah. on showing people the, what actually shows up there. Yeah, that would be fun. Might be interesting. So, so uh, cool. let, let's talk about our first story and th yep. this should hit home for you, Scott, because uh, <laughs> this is about uh, some uh, things going on in Canada where uh, the your federal government has been tracking 33 million phones during yes. the COVID-19 lockdown. They admitted to secretly surveilling secretly. 33 million. And it's like, it's funny, but when you read this article, it's a New York, it's a New York Post. Yeah, New York it's, Post. Yeah, very legitimate, by the way. <laughs> as he rolls his eyes for the audio people yes, yes. <laughs> um, well it's interesting that you should say that because it just sounded a little bit too sensational to me and some of the wording that they used you know about how you know the government was covertly um i can't remember some of the things oh it says um yeah it admitted to secretly surveilling and they used other terms like that right it was kind of inflammatory yeah. and so i went and i looked at you know the 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 National Post is, you know, it's fairly reputable, but maybe a little conservative, but they got their data from, you know, other places. And some of the commentary in this New York Post article is from a place called Black Locks Reporter or something, right? And when I went there, okay. it's like all these articles that are just trashing the government about, you know, COVID oh, stuff boy. and pandemic stuff. And and so there's a pattern there, right, of, of people who just have a bone to pick about the current Of government. course. And of so... Course. When I decided, you know, and, and interestingly, you got to pay three hundred dollars a, a year to be able to get access to that site, you know, for the detailed 
article. Of right? course so I didn't, you do. didn't see mm-hmm. the references where they got all this <clears throat> uh, inf- information. So I, I thought it was kind of interesting. I, I, I went, um, just, I did a couple of searches, you know, TELUS is the provider, the, the telco that, um, you know, they were using this data from. And, you know, it, it, in the article, it, even though they didn't say admitted, but it was really just cell tower data, location data, right? It wasn't GPS data from your device. Uh, so it wasn't that precise and it was anonymized. Um, but I, I went to, in the Canadian government, because this was a government contract uh, that was issued mm-hmm. to the telco to collect, collect the data, there is a, a process for getting you know contracts in place. And there's a new contract to renew the service um, and, it, and so there's an RFP out and you can go to their site. It's called buy and sell.gc.ca, which is where all the government tenders are. And so I went there and I downloaded the tender and I looked at it and, and there's actually an interesting document in that package, which was the questions and answers from the, from the vendors that are trying to respond. Well, ostensibly from the vendors, it looked more like it was from mm-hmm. the people who were concerned about the privacy. What's that? That's fair to ask questions to the, to the RFP uh, procurement of people. And, it was pretty clear that they were doing everything by the book. You know, they were just following the telco's uh, privacy. And and they said they would not choose a a provider that didn't have a privacy policy, um, you know, that didn't meet certain standards, you know, that were consistent with the government of Canada. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's not quite as covert (laughs) an operation, you know, that we're, they're secretly tracking us, uh, you know, because of, uh, you know, the governments need to, to keep us under their thumb. <laughs> it was really more to monitor patterns of movement between cell locations, you know, during the pandemic. And so, you know, I, I don't think it's quite as uh, yeah. scary a prospect, although, you know, certainly you want to be concerned about privacy. And I'm glad there was some transparency about it. But the, the article made it sound like there was no transparency. And I, I, I would the case. agree. Yeah, I would say, definitely say that's a misleading title for yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, and a little bit clickbaity, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and not surprised for New York Post. And like yeah. I said, you know, yeah. you know, I kind of snickered a bit uh, when I when I read this, and I'm like, and if you look at the other articles on on their site, there's other clickbaity titles as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, this is kind of the problem that we see with misinformation yes. yeah. in the news where you can definitely take this. If you just read the headline, didn't read the article, or if you didn't do your own research, yes, you would come to a conclusion that yep. the Canadian government is spying on all their citizens Yeah, yeah. Um, when that isn't necessarily the truth. It's true. I mean, the clickbait sort of goes hand in hand with fake news and, and stuff like that, right? A lot of the time. And um, the thing I look for, if I'm just doing a really quick scan to see if something is, you know, a, a, a being objective or not, you just look for inflammatory words, right? Ad- adjectives <laughs> that that you wouldn't normally see in objective news, right? It's you know, if it's trying to convince you of a certain, you know, mindset or perspective uh, as opposed to stating facts, then yeah, you're you're getting on the road towards fake news. That's great advice. Great advice. And I was just thinking, it made me think, you know, if you were running a surveillance operation, covert surveillance to monitor 33 million people <laughs> and, and you got reports from your agents in the field that the subjects were, well, I'm not sure who it is, but it's within a three quarter mile radius, square mile radius. <laughs> right. Does that help <laughs> in your surveillance yeah. operation? Yeah. Not so much. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I would say in the United States, I mean, we did have, you know, I mean, very real surveillance, through yeah, the NSA, I yeah. you know, through the telco providers, which was definitely more invasive. Yeah. Um, I mean, they were listening to conversations. They knew who people were. I mean, that kind of thing, the whole Edward Snowden stuff. And yep. Yep. Um, there's there's but, explicit stuff in these in this RFP question and answer that says, yeah. yes, no, we're not looking. We are not aiming to identify subscribers. So, yeah. Yeah. Interesting stuff. Yes. So so, uh, why don't we go to our uh, second story, which is our segment uh, called Aware Much. Aware Much? (laughs) Aware Much? (laughs) (laughs) Well, who wouldn't want to receive an unexpected package, you know, with a label that says it's from an organization. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's, it's got a label from an organization you trust contains some novel little device called a USB stick. 
you know, um, mm. I mean, many of our listeners probably remember the days when we had these little things, you know, plugged into your yeah. USB computer, had hundreds of megabytes of data on them. <laughs> Old technology, Scott. Oh. <laughs> but it was, you know, we all know that it was the the vector for things like Conficker and Stuxnet, you know, major, major uh, malware infections. And it was, it was a big thing. It was de rigueur, as they say. <laughs> But uh, most of us have even forgotten, you know, what they look like because we use the cloud for our our storage now, right? Um, but still, a hacker group called Fin7 was uh, identified as sending these physical packages with USB drives to businesses to congrat not well, not really to congratulate them on their network <laughs> security. Um, but they were impersonating organizations like you know Health and Human Services. Um, you know, it would be kind of interesting to get a box or a package from that organization. And sometimes it's just coming from Amazon in an in a Amazon box, a nice decorative box with a fake gift card and some nice mm-hmm. letter. And you know, I'm sure there's probably some people that go, oh, this is nice and plug it in and forget, you know, the, the risks of old <laughs> that we used to talk about. So this yeah. is just a reminder, you know, after... I think it's been going on for six months. You know, there's certainly cases of ransomware and other kinds of malware that are being spread by these things. In fact, even some employees are apparently are being bribed, you know, <laughs> to to put these Crazy. things in, a, in business computers. And then, of course, that gives the attacker uh, some access. So, um, you know, from the aware much point of view, uh, the message is never underestimate the curiosity of people and how they can be manipulated by a little bit of novelty, right? (laughs) So if you're looking for an innovative way to raise engagement about USB drive risks, as well as phishing and social engineering threats, you should really visit clickarmor.ca slash shared security or shared sec, sorry. Um, And ClickArmor turns your security awareness program into an immersive journey for end users, not just a checkbox for managers. Um, So we'll show people in gamified simulations the kinds of threats that they would see in real life. And it's really effective and and a fun way to make your team more secure. So visit clickarmor.ca slash shared sec and find out how we can help you go from being a stressed out fall guy to a trusted security leader that makes your organization more productive. So that's it for this week's installment of Aware Much. You know, Scott, I I love this story because it makes me think, you know, what's old is now new again, <laughs> exactly. right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, just when you think that this threat of malicious USB drives is, you know, years old, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, this was for a long time a huge attack vector. Yes. Um, I mean, I remember when I was a penetration tester um, doing red team assessments, we use this all the time. We use USB drives. We use CD-ROMs that we would drop, you know, labeled, (laughs) you know, uh, you know, company profits or future profits, uh, salaries, all kinds of things that would convince somebody I need to pick this up and put it in my computer. Yeah. Um, And we would get into networks all the time that way. And then there was this lull, I think, for, you know, several years where, you know, this really wasn't, it was kind of dead and gone, right? Yeah. And I was yeah. just surprised to read this, that this is now um, becoming more popular. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's, you know, like you said, old, what's old uh, <laughs> is new again. Um, and it's just one of those things just you have to keep in mind when people are, not reminded of the risks, they forget about them, right? And um, that's something I'm going to be working on over the next few weeks. You'll hear more from me and from Click Armor about how we are really going to change how people think about keeping people aware of those risks on an ongoing basis. Um, you know, what can you do to keep people after their awareness training fades? <laughs> yep. What remains, right? And and what can you do to uh, to keep people sharp and we're gonna we're gonna be talking about that so stay tuned can't wait to hear more about that it's great what does it mean to go off the grid well for most of us that are constantly relying on our phones tablets and laptops it means shutting them off and doing some other activity like enjoying nature or spending time with friends and family now you're probably a lot like me and struggle with turning off or putting down that smartphone because we always feel the need to be constantly connected. 
Listen, it's hard to go off the grid, but the good news is that there are products that can help. So that's why I recommend using a silent Faraday bag, which can instantly block all wireless signals, quickly taking you off the grid and giving you back control of your wireless devices. Check out their full product line at slnt.com. And because you listen to this podcast, make sure you use discount code shared security at checkout to receive 10% off your order. So our last story of the week, a new law in the United States um, will install kill switches in all new cars. This was a, another one that yeah. made me kind of scratch my head of like this actually became a law and it, it was actually uh, passed with the uh, infrastructure bill that was just signed uh, recently by President Biden. Um, and it was one of those bills or one of those provisions in the bill that got kind of snuck in. Right. And this yeah. is a common thing in the United States, at least, where legislators do these kind of crafty things. They're, they're not illegal, um, but typically, you know, something like this would have, you know, it would be voted upon by the Congress people and yeah. there would be some debate maybe about yeah. the yeah. privacy and efficacy of, of something like this. And, and, and I'd say the danger as yeah. well. I mean, at um, first glance, a lot of people might say it sounds like a good idea, but <laughs> what are the risks, right? I mean, crazy. Yeah. And so what's a little disturbing is that, uh, well, maybe not a little disturbing, but really disturbing is that this is being labeled as a safety device um, in all new cars. And there's, it. I guess it doesn't have to be in effect for five years. So there's five years, I guess, for the car manufacturers yeah. to figure it out. But they have to passively, I'll just quote here, passively monitor the performance of a driver of driver of a motor vehicle to accurately identify whether that driver may be impaired. So in other words, there has to be some active monitoring going on um, through Despite saying passive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you know, obviously AI and maybe some other technology yeah. could be used to do that. But um, as we all know, sometimes that technology screws up, um, misidentifies things, has errors. Yeah. Some things are going to happen. Yeah. And I, I see a pretty big kind yeah. of risk here with somebody getting really hurt or killed. Yeah. Not, not to mention abuse, right? I mean, by people oh with gosh. privileges, um, to access this stuff, you know, maybe you got, uh, you know, uh, spouse that, you know, they're separated or whatever, and you're trying to track them or whatever. That's, um, you know, to, that could be dangerous, uh, for, for somebody in that situation for sure. And, and of course there is the, you know, un, you can never tell when you're collecting information, for the wrong purposes or for one purpose and not yeah. anticipating how else it might be used um, by authorities. It's, it's a little scary. Yeah. And, and they purposely apparently put in the bill that it would be open, meaning that the government or law enforcement, there has to be a way for them to access this. Um, and so thinking of the situation with stolen cars or car chases, yeah. you know, the police could, you know, initiate the kill switch and just like out of a video game or a movie, uh, <laughs> it would, the car would come to a stop. Right. Yep, yep, um, yep. So there is obviously that use case yeah. that I think law enforcement is excited about, but uh, I just see the enormous risks of, I mean, first of all, they're going to get hacked. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's going to be, you know, the, the sec every second episode of shared security next year will be, or in five years. <laughs> <laughs> we're still around <laughs> we will be Scott. If, the, That's if, right. if the asteroid or comet doesn't hit us but you know don't look up scott don't look up yeah <laughs> <laughs> did you see the movie yet? i did I yes yeah okay it's fun I, I read some good interpretations of it too it's, it's yeah it's you know i recommend it yeah uh, for sure yeah. it, uh, it's it's fun it's but, fun yeah i mean i just back to the the story though it's just a little bit of a slippery slope well, it's a huge serious slippery slope right now oh. that they've gotten this kind of a law passed for something that seems benign or, or, you know, very targeted, but you know, what does this mean for things like end to end encryption? Right. Um, I, I was just going to mention yeah, that. Um, yeah. I know they've been 
governments all over the world have been trying to find, you know, force yeah. manufacturers like Apple to put back doors into their mm-hmm. devices, um, you know, so they can gain access. Essentially the same the thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Terrorism or what have you, but, um, yeah. or the, as Kevin likes to say, you know, save the children, right? <laughs> this will stop human trafficking if we break end to end encryption. Yeah. yeah. Um, it will not. that kind of thing. Yeah. And it won't. Yeah. So, uh, Interesting. Yeah. I guess my my bottom line though is, you know, will it all matter when when we're all using rented self driving cars? That's a good point. Yeah, because th- that is a giant kill switch. <laughs> <laughs> well, not to mention the fact that you know uh, you you can't track you know a single car or uh, you know right if, if you, you could be taking a different car every time you go on a trip. So it'd be a little mm-hmm. harder to to uh, track you down and kill you then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Interesting times we live in, Scott. Yep. yep. Interesting times. So, well, it sounds like uh, this is about all we have for this week's show. Um, I did want to remind our listeners that uh, to please check out our Reddit community. Reddit, yes. Yeah. Which is is up and I just checked in today and we've already got uh, a bunch of listeners that have nice. signed up already nice. and uh, uh, would love to get your feedback and comments on our, on everything that we post. Yeah. Um, I did want to say too, that we're doing something a little unique with uh, the community is that I'm posting the links to uh, articles and stories that we talk about in the show in mm-hmm. advance of us recording it. Yeah. So my hope is that um, our listeners will, you know, comment and maybe start yep. a little bit of a dialogue. Yeah. And hopefully we have more things to talk about these yeah, topics absolutely. on the show. Can, so. you know, uh, comment on people's comments, give name name dropping and stuff like that. And give people, <laughs> give people props. And, we in won't fact, name drop unless you, yeah, you know, without permission. It's okay. But, but, yeah. but yeah. But we also have, <laughs> it looks like we have a live chat capability too. So we, we could do. Do, do something like yeah. that during our show too. So you know, we can get enough yes. people uh, listening while we're, recording then that would be fun that's right and i will remind everyone that kevin loves comments yes. from our listeners. <laughs> controversial or not please yeah. Uh, yeah. provide yeah. your feedback but be kevin. prepared to be called something <laughs> <laughs> he'll be nice about it yes yes of course yeah cool all right scott well great to uh talk with you this week and yeah, uh and we will uh Catch up next week with another episode of the show. Yes, everybody. Uh, looking forward to it. Talk to you next time. That's all for this week's show. Visit our website, sharedsecurity.net, for all previous episodes and to sign up for our email newsletter. Looking for shared security merch? Be sure to check out our online store at store.sharedsecurity.net. Don't forget, you can always find us on Twitter at sharedsec, and please hit that like and subscribe button below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week for another episode of the Shared Security Show.